uh, when uh, catastrophe comes. And it was a week ago Wednesday that uh, this nation marked the 18th anniversary of the worst terror attack on U.S. soil that took place on uh, September 11, 2001. And on that day, nearly 3,000 people, I said 3,000 people, were killed when terrorists slammed uh, those hijacked airplanes into the world Trade Center, the Pentagon, and a field in Pennsylvania. Uh, you may or may not be among those who can recall what you were doing the day that that happened. And I won't pretend that I was at, nor would have wanted to be at so-called Ground Zero or anywhere close there too. But certainly we know that thousands were. But I was, as some of you know, presiding in the Eastern Diocese at that time and 400 miles, but only a one and a half hour flight from Norfolk to Virginia to New York was common every now and then for me to visit our church in Harlem there. Uh, matter of fact, was just uh, recalling, I believe, with uh, uh, one of the uh, Fairbanks sisters, whether it was Sister Carter or Sister Helene Richardson, but they know that they have a, an aunt there in the church in New York, and it would be uh, Sister Yvonne Marshall, who you know from here. Sister Marshall would be the one who would often pick me up at the airport. And, uh, but one of the things about flying into New York at that time was the World Trade Center. Those two towers uh, would certainly be the unmistakable monument at that time. But as unmistakable as those two towers were, it was equally, we, uh, equally uh, eerie a few weeks later to also fly into New York. And the skyline was empty of those two towers. It would be as if, as you've grown up here in St. Louis, and you're used to the St. Louis Arch, and you cannot fly into St. Louis, at least from that direction, and not notice the St. Louis Arch, the gateway to the west. Well, it would be the same that all of a sudden one day that the St. Louis Arch is missing. It would remind you that a catastrophe has happened. And here in our text, just as the lives of those 18 years ago, experienced losses. Here in uh, Psalm 46, we have, it's actually the words to a song that Israel sang during that time to commemorate God's miraculous deliverance in the midst of an impending national disaster. Whether you realize it or not, the book of Psalm, actually it is the hymn book. It is. It's the hymn book that Israel would sing when they gathered to worship the Lord. And the book of Psalm is simply uh, the lyrics to the songs they sung. And like most songs, you know there's a background. Is that right? Uh, many of the songs. Well, the background to this psalm is that there was a time when there was a national disaster, a catastrophe that was looming upon Israel and God showed up in a very mighty way and delivered them and from that day forward, they made up their mind they would sing the song that is found here in Psalm 46. And for instance, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Yeah. 
And the message this morning is simply this. Friends, life is 10% what happens to us. But did you know it's 90% of how we respond? I know that you and I at times we think life is 90% what happens to us and it doesn't matter how we respond. But this morning we want to look at the reality is, is that calamities will come in your life at that time. At time. A catastrophe will show up on the doorsteps of your soul. But the issue is, how do we handle it? When catastrophe, Lord have mercy, and may it never be the catastrophe that happened 18 years ago, but friends live long enough, is that right? We all will have our share of catastrophic issues in life. And first of all, when it comes to catastrophes in life, I want to say there is what I want to call the reality, the reality, the reality. And when I say the reality, did you know there will be, not maybe, but guess what? There will be times when major crises bring pain and confusion. The word there is pain and confusion. There will be times when, 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 when something happens and the fallout brings pain in your life and confusion in your life. And it's in verse 2 and verse 3, even though the songwriter starts off in verse 1, that says not only is God a, a refuge and a strength, but he's a what kind of help? Not just a help, but a what? Very present help in trouble. Well, why in the world do we need uh, help? Well, uh, look at what the psalmist says in uh, verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear. And listen and look at how he lays out all of what I want to call the catastrophic, all of the things going on uh, in nature. He says in verse 2, for instance, even though the what? But earth be removed. He says, even though the what mountains uh, be carried into the midst of the sea, even though its waters roar and are troubled, even though the mountains shake with its swelling. Uh, do you see uh, uh, what the psalmist says? He begins to describe all of these calamities that happen in the God-created world in which we live. Uh, but even though we live in a God-created world, we also live in a man-corrupted world. <laughs> And therefore, the world in which we live is subject to not only natural disasters that, create, that happen in what we call the created nature, you know, we call it mother nature. I have to leave that to another uh, message one day, but uh, it's not only what happens when it comes to uh, mother nature, but there's also uh, unnatural disasters that I'm going to call have to do with uh, brother nature. Again, that's another me message, but we just want you to know that uh, don't you know that as long as we live, there's going to be stuff that, that happens that either will blow away and knock down that stuff that is precious to you and precious to me. And if you look at what the psalmist says, uh, he talks about the finality of earthquakes. He talks about the fury of thunder. He talks about the force of a flood. And what's amazing, if you uh, don't read those verses too quick, notice what he says. He, he says, even though the earth be removed, which means he doesn't say if there are earthquakes. He says, though there are earthquakes, though there are waters, though there are mountains that, sh that shake, over all my friends uh, want you to know that life is full of catastrophes and life is full of stuff that will impact our lives and bring its share of confusion and pain. Well, we may not be here today 
and our problem may not be the floods that were in Houston. Uh, we may not be here today, and our problems are like what happened in the Bahamas. Uh, we may be insulated today, but you know if we'll just keep uh, going, a tornado will show up one day. But the reality is when it comes to catastrophes in life, it may have nothing to do with the, what I want to call geologic issues that are taking place in the atmosphere, but what it will have to do with the earth-shaking uh, issues that show up in our lives. Uh, for instance, uh, you may be facing financial struggles. For someone else, uh, you may be here today and you're still struggling with the loss of parents. Uh, for someone else, you know the horrible experience of losing a child or children. Oh, bless the name for others of you. The issue is children or, or grandchildren may seem to just be lost, okay? You'll get that later on. But uh, the reality is uh, uh, all of those issues, they have a way of impacting our life. For someone else, it may be a long-term illness. For another person, it's a marriage that's uh, crumbling. Just talk with a 40-year-old a, a uh, uh, friend very recently, and he's sharing with me uh, what was going on uh, uh, as it relates with this marriage. Uh, for someone else, it may be that your career has collapsed. Uh, just spoke with uh, 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 another professional person a couple of weeks ago, and uh, she was earning a six-figure salary, and before she knew it, she was getting one of those calls that she never expected and was being ushered out of the door, and for all intents and purposes, she does not know what happened, but the reality is, is that one day there is the security of a career, and the next day it has been destabilized, as it were. One day uh, uh, her family is uh, used to that income, and the next day uh, there is an earthquake, a financial earthquake there is, and, and you don't know anything about that, but I just want you to know she knows what that is like. There is this tendency, friends, that the things we put our security in, the things that we think is going to always be there, the things that we think we can count on, the things and even not only the things, but the people that you think will never I said, never leave you nor forsake you. Don't you know the Bible says God is the only one who said that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But sometimes we make the mistake of assuming that no one else would leave us nor forsake us. But friends, as long as you live, as long as I live. The Bible is true. It was Job who said that man that is what? Born of a what? Woman is of how many days? Come on now. What? A few days and what? Full of trouble. Now, he didn't say full days and few troubles, but few days and full of trouble. And I don't know about you, but uh, one of the things is that when uh, God allows, I didn't say God calls, but when God allows these catastrophes that show up in our lives, one of the problems uh, is that when that which we thought was secure our health that we thought we can depend on. Come on now, some of us know that you go to bed and you thought everything was fine, and all of a sudden, before you know it, you're in the hospital, you're on your way to urgent care. Some of you know that it's one thing that you're used to seeing other folks uh, get sick and, and end up uh, uh, with the need for emergency medical attention, but there's something about, oh my goodness gracious, uh, you find it that the longer you live, the less you can depend on these bodies. 
Oh, and when something happens, this is uh, what, I, what I find interesting. When the catastrophes come in life, usually in the midst of our catastrophes, it's hard to resist the temptation to ask what I want to call that three, it's a one word, three letter word. I didn't say four letters. I said three letter word. And that is the word why. You see, one of the most painful and challenging experiences in the life of both, I'm going to say believers and unbelievers, when we are facing tragedies is why do bad things happen to good people? See, it don't mess us up when bad things happen to bad people, does it? No, it does. Now, you, you may not say it that way, but oh, my goodness gracious, it, it, it's a problem when bad things happen to good people, especially when and we happen to be the good people, as it were. Oh, blessed name of God. Uh, uh, I agree with it. I just love how uh, uh, Carl uh, McCroy, let me remind you how Carl McCroy puts it when it comes to this whole issue of when bad things happen to good people. He says one of the first and most persistent questions in this life is why? He says it's arguably the shortest sentence in the English language, but it's a wrecking ball that will mess up the best of our thinking. In other words, he says, I don't say it, he says, why does life hurt so much? Why is life so unfair? Or why do bad things happen to good people? He says, and again, I'm out, you know, I'm going to share what he says. Uh, this is not directed to any one individual, but he says, why does a chain smoker live to be 80 while an eight-year-old dies of cancer? Why do drunk drivers walk away unscathed after sending others to the grave. He says, why do babies die in the womb? He says, uh, uh, as we think about cataclysmic events, why do tornadoes suck people out of their hiding places but leave China cabinets untouched? Why do the rich get richer while the poor get poorer? Why do banks get bailed out while homeowners get thrown out? Uh, why do people go on shooting rampages in elementary schools? He says, why can't the doctors do something? Why doesn't the president do something? Now, I'm sure there are times I wish the president would do nothing, but I'll leave that alone. But uh, he goes on to say, why doesn't God do something? Why didn't God answer my prayer? Why didn't God perform a miracle? He did it in the Bible. How come he did didn't do it from, uh, from me. He said there are times we wonder why do I have to go through life feeling alone even though I'm surrounded by people? Is there anybody here? You know what it's like to be surrounded by people but yet as lonely as all outdoors. Uh, why was I born this way? Why was I born at all? And he goes on to say why, why, why? And and, and I want to remind us, my friend, there will be times uh, when these uh, catastrophes in life show up in, our, in, our, in the reality of our sojourn. But at that time, oh, I'm reminded uh, of the songwriter, said, I believe the songwriter said, tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder. Listen now, what? Why? It should be this way all the day long. When there are others uh, uh, seeming they're having no problems. And he goes on to say, uh, uh, Father along, friends, we'll know out about it, okay? Father along, we'll what? Understand why. And he goes on to say, cheer up. Not that it's not painful, but he says, go ahead and cheer up, my brother. We'll understand it. What? All oh, what by and by because we're used to knowing everything 
It's difficult for us, isn't it, when we cannot figure out the why crisis allowed to come in life. But it's not only the crisis uh, and the reality of catastrophe, but secondly, there's what I want to call the resource, the resource, the resource. Okay, the resource, and uh, this is saying what we mean by the resource. The resource says this, where do you turn in the hour of crisis or where you turn in the hour of crisis reveals what you were before the crisis or calamity? Let me read to that again. Listen now, where you turn in the hour of crisis uh, reveals uh, what you were before the crisis of calamity. Uh, in other words, did you know all of us have coping mechanisms? Yes, we do. Come on now, all of us. Well, I I'm glad my deacon here, he raised his hand, all of us, all right. So somebody tell the truth here. Me and, me and him may be the only one, but let me try it one more time, okay? All, how many of us? All of us. Yes, we do. All of us, including yours truly, we have what I want to call coping mechanisms that may or may not be wholesome or helpful when the pain shows up as a result of the catastrophe of life. In other words, we don't all turn to something. Yes, we are. Come on now, we're going to all turn to something. And did you find out that there are sometimes the things we turn to, frankly speaking, are not wholesome, not healthy, and at times they make our situation worse. Yes, they do. Then they uh, make them better. And uh, uh, what, they, what this has to do here in this passage, uh, the, the psalmist lays out, he says, the reality is there will be those share of deaths in our family. There will be those share of debt and financial situations. There will be those share of disappointments in life. There will be those times we are let down in life. But look what he says in verse four, and this is what this has to do with a resource, all right? In verse four, it says, there is a what? A river whose streams, what? Shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the most high. Well, for you and me, because we often have more water than we can ever imagine, the phrase, there is a river whose stream shall make glad, that don't, that don't, that, you know, we don't shout about that. Well, the reason is, is that we don't understand that in biblical time, it was absolutely important to have access to some water. In biblical times, it, was, it made the difference in battle, whether you had access to a river. And uh, uh, commentators, if uh, we, uh, commentators are correct, we believe that the background of the 46th Psalm is the time when Hezekiah and the nation of Israel were under attack. And in those days, rivers, you needed a river because if you ever found yourself without access to water, you was in trouble. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. It sat on top of a hard, rocky, mountainous area. And the problem is where Jerusalem was located, there was no river that can get to it. And so what would happen is that if you could cut off your enemy's water supply, you could beat them as it were. But what Hezekiah did, he beat them to the punch, and there was a tunnel on the outside of Jerusalem that carried water to the 
well to a well on the inside of Jerusalem, whereby then when the enemy tried to take them out and take advantage of no water, guess what? Although there were problems on the outside, there was a gusher, a well of water on the inside. And when the psalmist says there is a river whose strings thereof shall make glad, he said they were worshiping God because they would never forget that when they were down and facing trouble. Listen now, they had a resource on the inside that came from the outside that provided them hope in the midst of their troubles, as it were. Well, I want to let you know today that when, not if, but when we go through our share of problems. You and I, we need a resource. Yes, we do. We need a resource on the inside of our hearts and of our souls that will stabilize us as we go through what we go through. Now, depending on your age, depending on your age, depending on your age, Do any of you remember that commercial? That uh, commercial that said, how do you spell relief? Uh-huh, so you, you just told off on yourself. <laughs> and see, those of you, bless your heart, I'm a little envious, you look at me, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> but there was this old commercial, again, how do you spell relief? Come on, y'all go and help me. Who, you know, you was in school 40 years ago uh, as well, but come on, how do you spell relief for R O L I. I, oh, yeah, uh huh. Oh, bless, uh huh. See, oh, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, some of them, what? Well, see, the Rolaids company wanted you to know. See, some of you just getting it. You're just getting it. I understand you just wasn't born, uh, you know, 100 years ago, okay? Uh, but, but, but the Rolaids company wanted, when it comes to the time when you needed some relief, when you needed a resource, relief was spelled not R-E-L-I-E-F, but they wanted you to believe that when you need relief, you need to turn to roll aids. Well, roll aids may help if you've got an upset stomach. But I want you to know that there is no Rolaids that will be a sufficient now relief when it comes to the calamities in life. Matter of fact, as I said a moment ago, all of us have some coping mechanisms. And some of our coping mechanisms only make our situation worse rather than better. Uh, when I think about the whole issue of water, uh, I'm reminded there was a movie uh, entitled Lifeboat, and it was about some shipwrecked people that were left drifting aimlessly on the ocean in a lifeboat during World War II. As the days passed under the scorching sun, their rations of food and fresh water gave out. The men grew delirious and thirsty, and one night while the others were asleep, one man ignored all previous warnings, and what he did, he gulped down some salt water and did it for a few days. Well, you may or may not realize he died shortly thereafter. Well, the problem is, is that ocean water contains seven times more salt than the human body can safely digest. And so drinking it, a person actually dehydrates because the kidneys cannot handle all that water and the overload of salt and the more salt water someone drinks. I better go ahead and drink some water here. Uh, but the more salt water a person drinks, 
guess what? The thirstier they get. And see, I want you to know that there are some times we really don't realize that the opposite of what we really need, we ignore. I mean, we go for the opposite, is that right? And we won't embrace uh, what we really need. What do you mean by that? Well, sometimes uh, we, we, we're, we're turned to the wrong thing to, 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 to satisfy uh, 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 some of our thirst. For some, it may be physical intimacy. Well, the problem is, is that uh, that may help for a moment, but uh, that uh, especially, well, I'm, 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 I don't want to get in too much trouble here, but let me just go in and say, okay, uh, it, it, uh, one, we understand it's supposed to be in the context of marriage. I know some are ready to leave out now, but anyway, don't leave out. But even, listen now, even within the context of marriage, God, see, God created, yes, he did, God created sex. We, we make it seem like he didn't, Hollywood didn't, but God wants the God-given gifts, okay, to be enjoyed in the context of marriage. Uh -huh, uh -huh, let me move on. But the issue is whether inside of marriage or outside of marriage, uh, the problem is, is that uh, uh, that will not satisfy your soul. It may satisfy desire won't satisfy your soul. Uh, those of uh, the rest of us, work is satisfying and productive, but it still will leave us thirsty. Food is a necessity, and if your deepest problem is a physical need, food will help, but sometimes, and the reality is, uh, is, is they say when the going gets tough, you know, the tough may, uh, they say, you know, the, the tough, but when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Well, in some of a uh, person where the going gets tough, it's head to the refrigerator. Okay, I'm glad I got a witness, okay? And I'm not the, you know, you're not the only one, praise the Lord. Lord knows I'd have made more trips to the refrigerator and the so-called pantry than I ever should have. The others, when the going gets tough, the tough go shopping, oh, praise the name of God. And because I enjoy living where I live, let me just talk about me, as it were, but I never forget there's a moment, a uh, downtime in life, not even here in uh, St. Louis, as it were, and uh, remember, you know, there's a mall real close to the house, and, uh, and so, uh, Lord knows, the last thing I need to do is be spending some money we didn't have on something that we didn't need. Oh, uh-huh, 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 but, uh, but, but you know what, I went ahead, went on to the mall, Went and bought something Mr. Pollard didn't need uh, with some plastic I had no business using. Uh, but guess what? You know what? When I walked out of the mall, guess what I did? I felt good. I really did. I had me, I really, I'm being honest, I had me a little bag of something. I did, I'm just being honest. But whatever I was discouraged about, I assure you, I got double discouraged when the credit card bill came in. In other words, the very thing that I tried to settle for a coping mechanism was the last thing I needed. But I do see why that's where some of y'all first choice. But let me get back on track here. I just uh, want you to know that no matter what it is, friends, we all 